It's not planned for, it was grown organically over the years. Uh, we believe one north, we can plan for it. This is a terminal on a local area network. It uses UHF radio frequencies. It's perfect for a situation like this one. This is the Ross Dress for Less distribution warehouse in Newark. With this terminal, I can input data, retrieve data, have full access to my computer network. Now, this is probably more capability than you need on your network, but this is definitely the era of the networked computer. Today, we take a look at the latest local area network technologies, including some low-cost LAN alternatives, on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association. Additional funding is provided by Byte Magazine and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe, and with me this week is Jan Lewis. Jan, it seems in this personal computer business, we are very quickly evolving from the situation in which we used to use standalone PCs to the situation where everyone now wants to network their computers. Why is this happening? Well, sort of a natural evolution. If you think about the way people do work, let's say before the advent of PCs, people would do their work at their desk, individual work, and then they would interact with other people in their office where they'd share ideas or, or share information, uh -huh, et cetera. Uh -huh. Well, what's happened over the past decade or so with the advent of personal computers is that people have gained a lot of productivity at their desktop mm -hmm. for the individual work. Uh, but now the other part of that, of course, is the interaction with other people uh -huh, in your organization uh -huh. or in your group. And that's what's really happening now. That's why we're extending out into the networking part of it. Yeah. And of course, as you know, that's led to a whole new software category called groupware. Mm -hmm. One of the newest, most exciting products in that category is something called Notes from Lotus. We have Brownell Chalstrom of Lotus Development Corporation here. And what exactly is Lotus Notes, Brownell? Lotus Notes is a group communications product, Stuart. It allows people to create and access shared information. It's a true client server application that runs on most local area networks, Novell, 3Com, mm -hmm. IBM. It runs under OS2 with Presentation Manager, and that's what we're looking at today, but it also runs under DOS Windows uh -huh. and looks the same. Now let's take a look at the notes workspace here. In the top right is my electronic mailbox here and my name and address book for my company. Notes has a complete electronic mail system in it that allows integrated text and graphics, but it's much more than an electronic mail product. It's really a document distribution and management system. Let's take a look at some of the documents that we might be sharing. The first one is a sales field tracking system, which contains anecdotal information and statistical information from the field sales force. Now, we can view it in this information in different ways. If I'm sales management back at the home office, I might look at the executive view, which shows me just the high, uh, high priority items. But if I'm a product manager in this company, I might want to take a look at what the sales force has to say about my product, their successes, their complaints, questions, etc. It's sort of an information marketplace for people who don't necessarily even know each other. Now, this next one is a discussion uh, about a new product introduction, the product being called Rendezvous. And what this document shows is a, uh, a proposed artwork for the cover of our sales brochure. This demonstrates the integrated, rich text and graphics capabilities of Notes. Stuart, Notes is a good product for small groups, but it really has the management capabilities, security, and wide area data communications facilities for enterprise-wide applications. Well, no, thanks. Jan, that must be true because I understand one of the first customers for Lotus Nodes bought 10,000 copies of the product. Mm. Well, this, I'll tell you, this is a good product. It's well implemented in terms of groups being able to work with uh -huh. each other, and it's very elegant. I like it. Jan, today we'll focus on low-cost LANs. We'll take a look at two peer-to-peer -peer network systems that give you network power at a low cost. We'll also look at two more complicated, more powerful network products. One of the newest network products out now is something called 10Net Plus. It's being beta tested by a California law firm, and we begin with this report. At the San Francisco law office of Buchhalter, Niemer, Fields, and Younger, attorneys and office staff are linked together over a local area network that isn't proprietary and doesn't require a dedicated file server. It's called 10Net Plus from Digital Communications Associates, 
and it provides the firm with an easy and inexpensive way to connect PCs to mainframes and to other PCs. The costs predominantly is one issue. Um, second issue is administration. Uh, we found in, in our studies that Novell and 3Com uh, have a huge overhead in administration to support them. It would have meant learning a, a, a new operating system, um, and we felt as though we did not want to go into that particular world because the industry is changing a significant amount. The firm's network has automated timesheet entry at the local level, and it permits secretaries to access word processing documents and attorneys' PCs for updating calendars and database files. The network also serves as a gateway to IBM mainframes and through a modem pool, a link to branch offices in Los Angeles and other suburban locations. Although the 10 Net Plus network doesn't call for a dedicated file server, there are advantages to assigning a repository machine to simplify the backup procedure. If you have data scattered out on, on a bunch of drives throughout the network, uh, you have essentially one device that is doing the backup. It's got to go to each of those devices and pull the data. The concept here was not to do that, but to provide a repository machine where the backup became easier. We, we call it a clustered approach. We cluster a bunch of PCs around a, quote, server and run it off of a Starland topology. The firm's computing director expects to outgrow the peer-to-peer -peer LAN at some point as the network gets bigger and files become more cumbersome. But for now, the simplicity of operation and installation has proven itself. You plug in a card and uh, fill out the profile and change a couple of lines on a bat file, and uh, you're up and running. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. With us in the studio now is Jack Schoff, president of Artisoft Incorporated, and next to Jack is Alex Karahalios, vice president of engineering at Artisoft. Jan? Jack, let's start with an overview. What are the different types of local area networks? Basically, there are two types. Uh, there's peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks and, not, and dedicated servers. Uh, dedicated servers are typically a very large... ...calculate properties of things that you normally would measure, experimentally speaking. Um, the whole idea is to... ...the office with printers and disks, and you make use of all of them together in a big group. What are the trade-offs? What do you lose with peer-to-peer? -peer? Well, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, obviously you're sharing parts of a computer, and, and part of that is computer time, and part of that is uh, maybe you don't get to use your printer when somebody else wants to use it at that instant. So you give up a little bit, but obviously the benefits far outweigh the uh, restrictions. One of the problems, Alex, are the memory demands that the network makes on your computer. What is the cost? What's the overhead of running something like Lantastic? Well, Lantastic has the lowest memory requirement of any operating system on the market, network operating system. We take less than 12K of memory on a redirector or a client you know, workstation, and we take less than 45K on a server, which is far less than anything else. So even compared to a peer-to-peer -peer LAN, or I'm sorry, compared to a uh, dedicated yeah. LAN, it's far less than a dedicated LAN. So the memory requirements are not an issue with our LAN. Um, the benefits on a dedicated LAN potentially are that you may have a dedicated machine that may be right. faster. But uh, like Jack had mentioned, the benefits on peer-to-peer -peer outweigh the... Uh, Jack, what are, what are the cards we see you have here? Is this part of your system? Yes. Uh, both these computers here are interconnected with our 2 megabit LAN. That's a unit here. Mm -hmm. um, what we've done is we put some processing power on the card to eliminate some of these problems with peer-to-peer -peer LANs in that they take up some resources of your machine. Uh -huh. We put a lot of horsepower on this card to, to ease that uh, situation. So this is our 2 megabit card. Mm -hmm. We have our 10 megabit Ethernet card for those hot rod people who need lots of speed. Um, this card's $349. The 2 megabit card's $249. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it's uh, still pretty low cost to, to set up a system. You have a low end product also. We also it? just came out with our, our uh, Lantastic Z. It doesn't even need a card, it's just cable and software. And it uses the serial and parallel ports in your machines. All right, Jack, describe the hardware setup you have here and show us how the network manager uh, okay. works. Right here we've got two uh, 3D6. Uh, laptop machines uh, with us and uh, we're in the network manager right here. This is what the network manager would use to set up the system. Mm -hmm. Basically he put in all the users that are going to be able to use a, this particular machine. Um, he can 
also define what things want, uh, he wants to share on the network, uh, whether they be printers, disks, subdirectories, and then the, the uh, security to restrict the use. Obviously, you don't want everybody to use everything on your machine. Um, so we use that as access control. Um, for example, uh, we can restrict by names of people or by groups of people. So you're defining Jack's access there, which is everything, but MIS has, has a different kind of access. Describe yes. that. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have the MIS uh, group, let's say a, a class, MIS class, would only have lookup and execute access to this subdirectory. Uh, this happens to be a Lotus 123 subdirectory, and you wouldn't want them to take it home on, with them on a disk. Uh -huh. So they can only execute the program from here. Mm -hmm. What's the Network I feature you have in the software? Okay, the Network I is a uh, pop-up program that allows you to take over machines on the network and use them as if you were sitting at those machines. All right, Alex, what are you doing here? What I'm doing here is I'm just doing a directory on my disk, and Jack can see it on his computer Would you also. do that again? Yeah. Sure. I see, hmm. okay. Now, I can even make use of his computer for my system. We may be hundreds of thousands of feet away, but I can go in and do directories, run programs, uh, do lookups, mm -hmm. databases, spreadsheets. In fact, I can pop up uh, multiple windows to multiple computers at the same time. So if I'm a network manager, I can help somebody. If I'm a teacher, I can interact with my students. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different applications and You can for see this. and control his machine, but he, can he see and control your machine also? Uh, yes, it can, we can cross uh, cross the machine so he can look at mine and I can look at his. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a big brother. Uh, he knows when I'm looking at his machine. Mm -hmm. The little cursor <laughs> blinks in the corner, so uh, you can't... Uh, can't get away with that. Now, now one of the nightmares usually of getting into a, a, a LAN is the installation, the setup. How do you make it easy to do that with your system? Well, back to the windows, uh, everything's window driven uh, and, and uh, really you can be as restrictive as you want. Uh, unless you want big time security and, and you have zillions of different things on your machine, uh, the installation is basically you enter one user in if there's just one person going to use your machine, and, and if you have a disk to share, you enter the disk in and, and that's it. Alex, uh, what kind of user is this appropriate for, this kind of network? Is, is it's, it's appropriate for a wide variety of users. You can have somebody who's very basic, um, a small business, for example, that wants to connect a few PCs, or a very large um, university environment that has a lot of students that want to compete for, for machines' resources. All right, now this runs under DOS, right? I mean, one hears that Unix is the environment you need for a network, but you're doing this under DOS. What's the difference? Well, uh, the big problem is memory requirements, and, and since we do take up the least amount of memory in the industry, being only 12K, uh, we're a lot less than even pop-up programs like Sidekick and, and some of the others, um, and then you still get the full, full power what of this. What about the price of uh, these units? Well, again, uh, the, uh, our lowest cost, the serial network, is only $199 for two stations, uh, $249 per computer for the two megabit, and 349 for uh, uh, and do you need 386s to have this thing really working properly? No, uh, throughout our office, for example, we have lots of original PCs uh -huh, uh -huh. and all the way up to 386s. But okay. yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Sure. Sometimes you want a network to hook up different kinds of PCs, Macintosh's PCs, even Unix machines. One network product that does that is called TOPS, and we have a report on it. The California State Automobile Association is in the business of serving motorists, a job which extends from the network of car diagnostic clinics to the offices where the firm's other activities are coordinated, including its travel and insurance services. While there are 400 computers at work here, there are only nine work groups in place, tied together by local area networks. Unlike many companies where Macintoshes are, as one officer told me, brought in through the back door, here they were openly embraced by management, so much so that today 90% of the computers on these local area networks are Macintoshes. And if you want to get in on one of these local area networks, you can do it best with a Macintosh. The network is TOPS from TOPS of Alameda, California, a division of Sun Microsystems. Top simple installation and compatibility with the workgroup's few PCs made it an early choice. Well, TOPS is a, um, is a distributed um, system. A lot of the others are centralized systems and they require a dedicated PC. And one of the reasons why we chose TOPS is not only it was way back when the only software that could work with the IBMs and the Macintoshes, but that um, it was, did not require a dedicated PC. So it was very cost efficient. TOPS enables the Macintoshes and the PCs to fetch files from each other. Those files can be viewed if the same applications with which they were created are present on the retrievers system. It is not possible, though, to run an application 
on another person's PC. Top special software translators eliminate many PC and Macintosh file incompatibilities. Users make available to others on the network specific files or folders, a process called publishing. Others can view the available files and access them on their own computer through a simple process called mounting. A user can add password protection for additional levels of security. People here say TOPS has it over other systems, including Novell, when it comes to cost and simplicity. Well, TOPS is a whole lot cheaper, easier to install. Novell, you have a whole, whole stack of manuals and software, while TOPS just got a couple of disks for each um, user. Um, pretty easy. Hoped for future improvements to TOPS include a faster speed and some way to eliminate the mass of spaghetti wires that tie all the machines together. In San Francisco, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us in the studio now is Robert Salgado of D-Link Systems in Irvine, California. Their product is LandSmart. Next to Robert is Ruben Keeles, Director of Marketing with D-Link. Rob, how does LandSmart compare with the other networks that we've seen earlier today? Well, LandSmart stacks up pretty well. Um, PC World said it was the easiest one that they've installed. And um, we also have the ability to connect to TCP IP, which would give us access to mainframes, Unix, Xenix. So from two users on up to 200 users. Rob, you would consider this a kind of entry level uh, network product, right? Yes, um, low cost with high performance. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the physical setup we have here, Ruben? Well, we have two computables. I have a portable here, 386, and a 286 computer with a hard drive there. Each computer will act as a server. We've connected them through a simple coax uh -huh. cable. And here's the particular card we're using today. We have a 10 megabit Ethernet card, uh -huh. one of the many types of cards that we manufacture, ArcNet, Ethernet, and twisted pair. And this is the cable we're using today. It's a coax cable with simple twist on BNC connectors. Okay, Rob, you've got the, the network software up there and yes. run us through that. Well, we invoke the main menu just by typing in net. We can see everyone on the network and uh, we're indi I'm indicated by the local. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, There's our two stations, yes. Rob and okay. Ruben. And mm -hmm. I'm a server. We can share our resources simply by pressing the insert key. LandSmart will ask us if we want to share a disk, directory, or printer. Um, Landsmart senses we have a C drive, we could call it disk C. Mm -hmm. So this is your C drive you're now opening up to yes. the network. Uh -huh. um, we can grant access rights and optional passwords. C drive is now shared. Mm -hmm. If we want to share a printer, it's just as easy. Landsmart sense we have a COM port, we could call it our dot matrix printer and we can set passwords to your printers also. Okay, once again, this is the printer on your system you're now opening yes. up to the network. Anyone has okay. access to it. Okay. We could delete them just as easily, we just Highlight the one we want deleted, type delete. It'll ask us uh -huh. to delete it. It's now gone. Um, being a peer to peer network, we can connect to other people's resources. Um, I have three drives on this machine. I can now have a fourth just by pressing return. If I don't know what's available to me, I simply type in F1. LandSmart's very easy to use. It'll show me that the server out there is Ruben. Hmm. I press return. LandSmart will also tell me what's available. And uh, Ruben is sharing his C drive and uh, word processing package. I'll choose that one. And um, no password. So that will look like your D drive, even I now, though it's on his machine. I now have a D drive. Now, we could access that D drive with a simple DOS yeah. command. Just go D colon. We now have a D drive. Um, I could run a word uh, multi-user package. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, OK, and I see as you're accessing the D drive, it's his hard disk that's, that's working. Yes, it is. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. And if so. you were to save this network setup, then uh -huh. the next time you logged on, you could also use his machine as a uh, D drive? Uh, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it's saved automatically. Um, one of the nice features about LandSmart is um, when you do save the network setup, it automatically reconfigures itself. When you turn on the network, Just the you automatically you share your, mm -hmm. your drives and connect uh -huh. to other network resources. Mm -hmm. We can escape out yeah, of here. Let's get out of this and see and, what else we can do. Um, Escape out of here. Word perfect doesn't want to let you go there. Huh? I want you to save something. Uh. Okay, let's type F7. Save document, we'll say no. We'll exit, we'll say yes. Okay. Okay, now we can go back to Landsmart by typing in net. And our main menu will return. 
we can send messages across the network. Um, mm -hmm. It's a memo sending. Uh, okay. Ruben, Ruben just you just sent Rob a message. Yeah. I just sent him a message. There you go. And we also have a chat function that we can invoke from here. Um, say you're on the telephone and your secretary has another call coming in to you. Um, she can't beep you because you're okay. already on your phone. Okay, so Ruben just sent you a message and want to chat. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. And just answer chat yes, and screen. you can communicate back and forth. Maybe the person on the line is more important, hmm. and you'll now know, and you can hang up on the other uh -huh. person. I just and he's gave typing my in from away. his machine then, huh? Yes, uh-huh. And um, just say okay. And um, that's our chat function. You could have multiple people chatting at one time. You can alternate queue and leave out of there. Um, All right, what else on the main menu we should We look could at? manage the print queue. People sending files to your print spooler, you could delete them, uh, change the order or sequence of printing from here. Um, we could also save the network setup. Here's a save network setup feature. Once you uh, share all your resources and connect to your resources, just save it, say yes, and every time you turn on your computer after okay. this. That's what Jan was asking mm -hmm. you about exactly. before. Ruben, what, what are the connect. memory requirements of running LandSmart? Well, now with our new release, LandSmart 2.0, you only consume 2K of RAM. Okay, but th that's, that's extended memory? Yes, that's correct. It mm -hmm. runs in extended memory. We use a 64K byte of extended memory uh -huh. to store our higher level mm -hmm. code. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's it cost to get into LandSmart if I want to set up a network? Well, it? if you want to set up a network for two stations, we have an entry level package that includes two cards, cabling, and software, an unlimited, site li an unlim unlimited user license uh -huh. for $495. And then if you want to add more stations? Each additional station will be $195. And the software? And the, so the software is unlimited, so therefore the purchase of one copy is all you need. All right, then. Charge. Landsmore, gentlemen, thank you very much. That's our look at low-cost lands. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, a big boost for Windows. Microsoft reports that the big AT&T deal to sell PCs to the Federal Aviation Administration provides for Windows to be installed on 40,000 PCs as part of the FAA's automation program. Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates says the Windows part of the deal was crucial in getting the government to select the AT&T bid. The PC contract with the FAA also includes two other Microsoft products as part of the package, Excel and Word. IBM is claiming a major breakthrough in the field of magnetic storage. Scientists at the Almaden Research Center in San Jose say they have squeezed one gigabit of data onto one square inch of disk space. The new magnetic disk is made of aluminum and coated with a cobalt alloy that allows for increased density and decreased magnetic noise. If you own a Miniscribe hard drive, support may be a little slow from here on in. The company filed for bankruptcy last week to seek protection from creditors. Miniscribe said it had no choice in the face of several investor lawsuits. WordPerfect, on the other hand, now says it will offer 24-hour-a-day user support. WordPerfect customer support lines used to be closed between 6 p.m. and 7 a.m. The company says that one-third of its workforce is involved in customer support duties. Alpha Software has released an updated version of its AlphaWorks integrated package. The new AlphaWorks 2.0 is the first integrated software program to offer a relational database, a file view function, and user-defined menus. Time for this week's software review, and here is Paul Schindler. You know, it really is a jungle out there, especially when it comes to word processors. You get tired of hearing about them, and I get tired of reviewing them. But here's a really good one, a me. It's a simple, straightforward, easy-to-use word processor, and it includes a number of features that allow it to be used as a desktop publisher. Plus, Ami operates under Windows. Need a guide through the jungle? Ami includes a style sheet guide. It ensures that Ami will not be a tool so flexible as to be useless. There are style sheets for letters, memos, reports, overheads, newsletters, proposals, and press releases. Ami walks you through formatting with icons and dialog boxes to help you produce professional-looking documents. In particular, it stores formatting and text information separately, making it easier to reuse formats. Ami is slow in WYSIWYG, but you can set an option to drop into draft mode and speed it up. Thus, it's a combined desktop publisher and word processor with hotkeys between. Ami is $200 from Samna in Atlanta. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. According to PC Connection, here are the top 10 best-selling software titles for the PC during the past week. TurboTax tops the bestsellers, followed by Quicken, Flight Simulator, the new WordPerfect, and Procom Plus. Finishing off the top 10 are PC Tools Deluxe, the new Grammatic, 
Quarterdex Memory Manager, the Norton Utilities, and the new Microsoft Works. IBM has released a new personal information manager called Current. It's a high-end product running under Windows and featuring its own graphical user interface. The program automatically links data in different categories. It features color-coded Gantt charts for project management and has a diagram function which allows you to graphically see the connections among the various categories. Conceptual Software has announced DBMS Copy 2.0. It's an automated file conversion program that will translate directly between any of 65 different software packages, including six spreadsheets and 17 databases. Great American Software has released a new small business accounting package called Money Matters. It offers strong accounts receivable functions, such as three different invoicing types. It allows individual customizing to suit the needs of different kinds of businesses. And it has a super track function that lets you track business activities by user-defined variables. Weekly Reader Software has released an IBM version of its Car Builder program. It's a kind of automotive CAD program for kids. With it, you can design your own car, run it through a wind tunnel or on a test track. You can save designs and turn it into a game to see who can design the best performing car. Finally, the New York State Education Department says students will soon be able to use calculators while taking the state regents' exams in mathematics. A spokesman for the National Council of Math Teachers welcomed the decision, saying there are still people who want today's students to have to suffer through the same manual calculations they had to do when they were in school. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software is produced by people whose income is derived from legitimate software sales. Software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.